At E3 2019, Bethesda introduced us to a new Elder Scrolls game that was free to play and coming to the Nintendo Switch called The Elder Scrolls Blades. I've played a ton of free to play Switch games and actually enjoyed most of them, so I was curious to see how this game would turn out. After a treehouse presentation for the game during E3 as well, the game pretty much disappeared and was delayed until 2020. Word was quiet on the game until it finally leaked that the game was being stealth dropped in May. Now the lack of fanfare and promotion for the Elder Scrolls Blades kinda made me think there was something going on with this game, but I wanted to play it anyways. And well, there's a problem folks, there, there's a big problem here. What's up guys, I'm RGT85, if this is your first time on the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. But without any further ado, let's talk about the problem with the Elder Scrolls Blades for the Nintendo Switch. So the way this video is going to work is we're going to talk about the stuff I like about the Elder Scrolls Blades, some of the stuff I'm mixed on, and then the big problem with the game. One of the cool things about the Elder Scrolls Blades is the story and just the main goal of the game in general. You play as a blade who returns to their village to find it being burned to the ground and destroyed by someone sent by a character known as the Bloodfall Queen. Because of this, most people have left town with very few villagers remaining. Your main goal is to rebuild your town back to prominence and of course find out why the Bloodfall Queen did what she did. The town building aspect is actually the coolest part of the game and something I really enjoyed. It reminds me a bit of that game that came out on the Wii called Final Fantasy My Life as a King. You build different things in town such as homestead, houses, alchemy shops, blacksmiths and much more. The more places you build up the more people will come to your town and live there which of course gives you more opportunities for missions. You can also upgrade your buildings to increase your overall town rating which unlocks more stuff for you to do to add to your town. Also the shops can be upgraded as well which gives you the ability to craft more stuff. You can even add little decor to certain areas to make things how you want them to look and increase wall structures of the town to make everything look nice and fancy. Now of course it's easier said than done to rebuild your town as you will need supplies, money, and time. How do you get supplies and money? Well by doing missions of course. Now missions are actually broken up into two separate types. There's quest missions and then there are jobs. Quest missions are the main missions that you get from characters in the world and some of these will help advance the story of the game, while jobs are just side missions that will allow you to get various resources. Unlike in previous Elder Scrolls games where you get quests by just exploring the world, everything you do is within the town and then you set out to a predetermined area that varies in size to complete the quest. At first I really didn't like this because it felt like a gimped version of a standard Elder Scrolls game like Oblivion or Skyrim, but then I realized I was kind of forcing myself to think that way. After going into the mission structure with a bit of a more open mind, it's honestly started to feel a lot like an old school dungeon crawler game. Everything takes place in the first person perspective and essentially you are visiting these bite sized dungeons with a task in mind, whether it be defeat a certain number of enemies, rescue town folks, or find a certain item within them. I actually enjoyed just how direct everything was as far as getting into missions and the action once I realized I wasn't going to be playing a standard Elder Scrolls game and actually somewhat enjoyed the mission structure because of this. Another thing that's cool about the game is that aside from the main game there are some additional modes as well. There's the Abyss which is basically a never ending dungeon with floors and the further you get into the Abyss the more stuff you unlock such as gold, XP and various treasures. There's also a one-on-one -on -one battle mode for online play that is PvP in which you will take on competitors of a similar rank and fight them in the arena, with the winner getting some additional stuff. I played a few matches of these and they felt fine and I won most of them, which was pretty cool. And finally, you can create or join a guild. By being in a guild, you can trade items with other guild members, use an in-game text-based chat system to talk to them, and even visit other members' guild towns to use their shops and check out their layouts. Pretty cool stuff. So while I enjoyed both the story elements and the town rebuilding along with the mission structure, obviously there are two main components we haven't talked about yet, graphics and gameplay, both of which are a bit of a mixed bag with this game. Let's talk about the graphics first. Now as you can see from the footage so far, Skyrim this ain't. The game's presentation is a mixed bag, and while Skyrim is obviously a last generation game, this game does look a bit worse than that. Characters look pretty odd, animation is lacking, there's lots of pop up, and there's lots of clipping as well, and the game's frame rate is just all over the place. Sometimes the game will get a bit stuck when it's loading, and it really takes you out of the action. Animation from the enemies is lacking as well, and the more you play, the more you start to notice the same environments being used over and over and over. At first it's not super noticeable, but after a few hours everything just sort of blends together in terms of the areas that you're doing missions in, with just minor differences such as item layouts, enemy placement, and variety. 
there's a few moments where the game does look pretty decent, and yes, this originally was a mobile game, but that really isn't a valid excuse for the game, considering the mobile version of the game was announced right alongside of the Nintendo Switch version by Bethesda, and plus Skyrim came out on the Switch and was a fantastic port. The gameplay is also another mixed bag. Now like I said, Elder Scrolls Blades plays more like an old school dungeon crawler than a standard Elder Scrolls game, and yes, at first I didn't really like it. Once I got a hang of the combat though, things improved as far as my enjoyment of the game was concerned, but there were still some issues once you understand the gameplay. The combat of the game is different than previous Elder Scrolls games and the enemies will attack you one on one. There's no group attacks or multiple character attacks. Whenever you encounter an enemy, it pretty much turns into a one-on-one -on -one game that almost feels a tad like Punch-Out. ZL and ZR are your attacks, with each hand corresponding with the button press you make to use your melee weapon. Tapping up on the analog stick will guard incoming attacks, while magic attacks are mapped to various buttons on the D-pad, and special melee attacks are mapped to the lettered face buttons on the Nintendo Switch. At first, it does feel a bit wonky, but once I got used to it, I didn't really mind it too much. You can also parry attacks to stun the enemy, change the tilt of your attack to try and target either upper or lower extremities, and use magic and special melee attacks, which is pretty easy. The problem is, the game sometimes just doesn't work. Over two dozen times I had gotten into a fight and all of a sudden, the game wouldn't register any button presses or attacks that I'm doing, and the only way I was able to snap the game out of this was just to mash buttons until it eventually brought up the potion screen. It's honestly annoying as hell, and it's not due to an enemy attack or anything, it's simply in the code of the game. Couple that with the scattered frame rate and it could just be super frustrating. Now this happened to me both in handheld mode and in docked mode, and both with Joy-Cons and a Pro Controller, so it wasn't an issue of the controller itself or anything like that, but simply a thing that occurs in the game for no rhyme or reason at all. But honestly, I can look past those flaws with this game because of one main reason, this is a free to play game. Elder Scrolls Blades requires you to spend no money whatsoever when you start the game, and I'm someone who's played a lot of free to play games on the Nintendo Switch. Warface, Warframe, Vigor, Paladins, Asphalt 9, all free to play games that I've played for hours and hours and never spent a dime. The only free to play game that I ever put money down on for the Nintendo Switch was Fortnite and that was because I wanted to try out the Battle Pass. With all of those games, I never felt like I was missing out on any of the core game experience because everything was just cosmetic stuff or would just hurry things along. And for about the first 7 or so hours of Elder Scrolls Blades, I got that same sort of feeling. But then something happened. Something very bad happened, which is the problem with the Elder Scrolls Blades. I essentially hit a wall. Let's take a look at both my missions and jobs right now, shall we? Notice how there is a ranking of 5 skulls on all of them? Well that means I'm underpowered in some way, shape, or form and shouldn't do these missions. Now notice how both the jobs and the missions are 5 skull? So that means every single mission right now I am unpowered to do. So what am I supposed to do? It's not even based on your level or anything like that. I'm a level 12 and a half right now, and some of these missions say I should be like a level 10 or a level 11 to do them. And that's where things get interesting, because it's not necessarily just based on your level, but also your equipment. Now how do you get better equipment? Well, either by playing missions and fighting chests within the missions, or by going to the blacksmith. But my blacksmith doesn't have any good weapons even though I leveled him up. I can slightly improve the weapons I have now, but still, this 5 skull rating remains on all of the missions. When you go to a 5 star mission and try it, you pretty much get destroyed. Now you can use revival scrolls to bring yourself back, but you only have a limited amount of those before you run out. How do you get more? Well you can upgrade your town, but once again you sort of hit a limit with that. Or you can use an in-game currency known as gems. Gems are required for a lot of things, such as speeding up the building process, weapon creation process, along with other things. You can unlock gems by doing missions, but once again we can't do any missions right now. You know what, fine, 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 let's go to the alchemy shop and brew some potions so we can at least try some missions. Oh, I need garlic to brew these potions. Well, there's two ways to get garlic, by doing missions or by buying them in the shop, but now the girl is out of garlic because I bought some earlier. When do we get more garlic? Who knows? Oh, I can use gems to get some potions, can I? And now you sort of see where I'm going with this. Essentially, I have hit a paywall with this 
game. I need copper to build structures or improve structures in my town so I can do more stuff. But the only way to get more copper is by getting chests in the mission or by spending real money to get random chests with random items and hope and pray I get more copper. I can't do missions because my character is too weak for some reason even though they are above the level requirement. I can't get potions because there's no garlic in the store but I can waste what gems I do have and hope and pray that I somehow beat the mission even though my equipment evidently sucks. It is insanely frustrating that I've been having no issue with the level structure or the grind in this game but then all of a sudden everything comes crashing down to a halt and I literally can't do anything unless I decide to pony up some actual cash. Like I said, I have played a ton of free to play games on the Nintendo Switch and never hit a paywall with any of them. I even reached out to someone who was also reviewing this game and they had the same sort of issue around the same time as I did with their playthrough. Theoretically, I suppose that there is a chance you could avoid this by the luck of the draw with chest items and meticulous management of your currency, but 99.9% .9 of people are going to hit this paywall and have to decide whether or not it's worth playing the game anymore. And to me, it's honestly not. I liked the core concept of the game. I liked the bite-sized dungeon, but the combat and the graphics definitely don't make me want to spend money to play more of this game. It's really a shame that Bethesda screwed this up so bad with the Nintendo Switch version of the game. And yeah, I get it. The Switch is a portable device, but don't treat the user base like someone who plays a lot of mobile games because they are very different markets. I know that a lot of mobile free to play games sort of rely on this, but I've personally never experienced one so predatory before mainly because I don't play mobile games and all the free to play games I've played so far on the Switch were very solid experiences. I honestly feel like that is the reason why Bethesda essentially stealth dropped this game to no fanfare because they knew it was a disgrace to the lineage and they knew it was a disgrace to the Elder Scrolls heritage of all the awesome games that we've gotten so far but really looking at Bethesda as of late I shouldn't have been surprised all right so that is my all right so those are my thoughts on the Elder Scrolls blades honestly I had a great time playing the game for like seven or eight hours when I was able to do things but once I hit this paywall I was just like it's not worth playing this game anymore it's not worth spending actual money to experience this game because I could just play Skyrim on my Nintendo switch and just sort of gimp it a little bit to make it more like the Elder Scrolls blades I think the core concept of the game is pretty fun rebuilding your town and stuff like that it's actually somewhat addicting but the problem is you just hit this paywall and you literally can't do anything and you just have to sort of hope and pray you have enough supplies I should be able to buy and craft supplies whenever I want to and the fact that I can't just makes this game an absolute wasted opportunity I don't see the point of playing a game for seven to eight hours and then you get to this point where you can't do anything anymore and you essentially just wasted those seven to eight hours so those are my final thoughts on the Elder Scrolls blades I will not be spending any money on this game I think it's ridiculous that this paywall just really hits you and it hits you so hard and I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this game except well just kind of trash it a little bit so let me know in the comments section down below if you experienced this with the Elder Scrolls Blades did you hit this hard paywall or did you get lucky and you just happen to have enough items to keep continuing your game because I honestly feel like a majority of people that have been playing this game ended up hitting that paywall and then just had to make that decision and as always guys thank you for checking out this video like I said if you are new to the channel make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications be sure to check out other videos on the channel and as always I will catch you guys on the next one. Later.